The following information is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. The views expressed do not reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. So if you think of yourself as nutrient deficient, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, maybe I'm deficient in vitamin C. Well, maybe vitamin D. But have you ever thought about magnesium? And if not, you should. Magnesium is one of the most important things you can have in your body. And someone who knows more about that than anyone is pharmacist Billy Weiss. And he's about to give you a health awakening. Welcome to The Health Awakening. I'm your host, Scott Laird. If you were on a deserted island and had no other supplements with you, you could only have one, what would it be? Well, I know the answer from pharmacist Billy Weiss. Billy, welcome to The Health hey. Awakening. And your answer is what? My answer is definitely the, the magnesium product, Magnesium, Scott. okay, so yes. now magnesium. Now, for those, those, folks of you who are, those folks who have not seen you on our program before, um, you are a pharmacist who likes to see people get off of drugs maybe they don't need to be on and, and maybe get a better lifestyle in order for them. And one of those major things is adding magnesium to their lives. Uh, why is that? Well, magnesium has over 350 positive functions in our body. 80% of Americans are found to be deficient. Mm -hmm. And in some, certain research, 100% of diabetics. So magnesium oh. is the fourth most abundant mineral in our body. 3,751 binding sites in our body. So it's critical to have adequate magnesium levels for someone to have what we call optimal health, right? Okay. I talk about optimal health all the time. It's critical for energy. It's critical for, for muscle function, the heart, the brain. I mean, it mm. just, it really works in every part of our body. You know, when I do, uh, I do blood testing for folks with my company, Laird Wellness. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so we, we do blood testing for folks and then we uh, find out what they need to change in their lives. And uh, quite often they, they see a magnesium uh, level and they, they have a reaction about that. But you say that that, that that doesn't matter on a blood test, right? Yeah, it really doesn't matter, Scott, because the, the bulk of the magnesium in the body is supposed to be working inside the cells. Mm -hmm. That's where it produces the energy and does, does all the magic for us. Okay. So when we do a blood draw, a typical blood draw does not measure what is inside the cell. Mm. So it's really not an accurate measurement of what's in the body. If, I tell everybody, if you already see a low magnesium level in that type of blood draw, you have real deficiencies inside the cell. Mm. But if you have adequate magnesium in that blood draw, it does not necessarily mean that you have adequate magnesium inside the cells and the organs where it's really doing its work. Gotcha, okay, that makes sense. Now you mentioned uh, binding sites. For those who are not familiar with that term, mm -hmm. what does that mean? There's the several hundred binding sites for magnesium. Yeah, so there's 3,751 binding sites in our body for magnesium. So that means that those are places that the body is looking for magnesium to come mm. and like open the door and, and produce energy, re relax muscles, help with migraines, mm. uh, PMS kind of cramps. Um, you go through the list and there's just tons of things. Wow. Now, one of the most common things I describe to people when they say, well, why do I need magnesium? Um, I explain the muscles. You just mentioned mm -hmm. the muscles. So mm -hmm. that calcium contracts muscles and magnesium relaxes them. And of course, the heart is the most important muscle in our yes, body. And so absolutely. it's constantly contracting and expanding. So would that explain something like if someone has a heart murmur or an arrhythmia or something like that, they don't have enough magnesium? Absolutely, it can be a sign that they oh. don't have enough magnesium. So over the past 30 years, I've seen many people's AFibs or murmurs, uh, arrhythmias, just be completely alleviated by starting the right magnesium mm. and the right amounts. And so it doesn't mean that's the only cause of those conditions, but it certainly can be a simple thing to check first and to look at first before we go into dangerous drugs for an arrhythmia, right? Mm. Now, speaking of drugs, so arrhythmia, and you, you've already mentioned uh, diabetes. And I'm sure a lot of people's ears perked up because a lot of folks in America have diabetes. So what is the connection with uh, magnesium and diabetes? 
Well, so magnesium plays a critical role in the body's ability to metabolize sugar mm. and to utilize the insulin that's necessary to metabolize that sugar. So when we're deficient in magnesium, we're not able to efficiently metabolize sugar and insulin. So now we have higher blood sugar levels and mm. it requires the body to try to make more insulin through our pancreas to take care of that because the blood sugar in the the, the sugar in the blood, when we have high blood sugar, is damaging our organs. So the body is trying to do whatever it can to, to take care of that, and that often creates higher insulin levels. We call it hyperinsulinemia, and that's a real problem um, because it creates inflammation and it just creates a, a havoc in the body. Now, for those folks that you see in your, in your pharmacy that come in with diabetes, are they familiar with that connection? Oh, no. No, it would be very rare that, that, that a patient would know, even that a pharmacist or a doctor would know. Mm. It's just not really talked about, Scott. In general terms, people don't, in the medical field, don't typically think, oh, maybe we need to look at magnesium, right? Right. Huh. Now, something else that's uh, interesting about magnesium, and there are several different types of magnesium. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one that's most common, I guess, out there, there's magnesium oxide, mm -hmm. we see a lot. Now, is... Is that the one that just makes people go to the bathroom where they know magnesium is to go to the bathroom? It is the one that makes people go to the bathroom and it's because it's only 4% absorbed. Oh. So magnesium oxide is only 4% absorbed. And so when we're talking about increasing red blood cell magnesium and magnesium in the organs, mm -hmm. magnesium oxide was equivalent to placebo. Really? So it is not what we're discussing here today and all the benefits of magnesium. It's, Think of um, if you were going in for a colonoscopy test, you would drink a big bottle of magnesium oxide to help you empty your, your colon out. So mm -hmm. it's just really a laxative at that point. Okay, so it isn't inside the cells and that's the key. All right, so that's we're gonna correct. talk about what are some good forms of magnesium and a lot more coming up. Stay tuned, we are gonna come back with another segment with Billy Weiss on The Health Awakening. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. We are talking before the break with our guest pharmacist, Billy Weiss, about magnesium oxide and why that is not necessarily the one you want because it's not poorly absorbed. Now, you have developed a, a product of your own, uh, basically because the way you explained it to me, you couldn't find a good one. <laughs> so, Correct, yes. So which good ones did you put in here? We're gonna talk about uh, elemental magnesium in a second right. too, why, why that matters, but you have five different kinds of magnesium in this yes. product of yours, why? Yeah. Well, I have five organic chelated salt forms of magnesium because they work down different pathways in our body. Mm. So each of those five works together, but they work separately also. So we're able to then take absorbable forms of magnesium, get them into the red blood cells, into the organs, into the tissues where they, where they work, mm. and we're able to increase energy. We're able to help the heart beat more effectively. We're able to decrease any kind of muscle cramps, migraines, headaches, PMS kind of cramps. I mean, wow. it just does so many, able to help the insulin uh, and sugar work more efficiently as we discussed mm -hmm. in the last um, segment. So we're just able to take these different um, forms. Malate is the most, malic acid is found in every, almost every cell in our body and helps produce energy. So one of the forms, the most abundant form in here is, is magnesium malate. Mm -hmm. Um, because it helps the body produce that malic acid that we need. Now let's talk about that. So in each in each of our cells, we have something called the mitochondria. The little, yep. uh, as people have described it, uh, it's the little energy factory of every cell. Yep. And so when we are low in magnesium, you've told me before that uh, the energy that is produced there, it's almost like that factory doesn't have the fuel it needs without magnesium. Yeah, the way I explain it is, you know, when the body is working efficiently, the the front door opens very easily and the and the energy goes in and and we make the ATP is ATP, what it's called. Okay. Adenosine triphosphate is like that engine, that energy. When we go through the front door, we make thirty eight units of ATP each time. And you can think of hundreds of trillions of cells in your body that that's happening in. When we're not able to go in the front door efficiently, and magnesium is the number one rate limiting factor to not going in the front door efficiently, which is why it is so common in diabetics, mm. have to go in the back door, and then we're only producing two units of energy. 
So we're producing 19 times less energy, which leads to things like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, cramps, pains, brain, brain fog, you know, the high blood pressure. I mean, you can go through the list, right? If you're making wow. 19 times less energy, you don't feel good and your body's not working efficiently. I'm sure anybody, everybody can name at least one of those maladies. If you, yeah. High blood pressure at least, the diabetes, the, the yeah. arrhythmias. Everybody's got something there. So does that mean that a lot of people are low in magnesium? Well, 80% of Americans, according to the, to the research, and I think I mentioned earlier that 100% of diabetics in right. some research were, were magnesium deficient. So one of the common things is, you know, our food supplies are obviously not the same. We're not typically growing our own stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, so we're mineral deficient in, in our food. And then there's so many prescription drugs that deplete magnesium, and it just goes completely overlooked, typically in the mm -hmm. medical community again. The pharmacists and the doctors never think of the depletion of magnesium from lots of common drugs, Scott, mm -hmm. uh, can deplete magnesium. Now, is that ever uh, a concern where it, magnesium will be contraindicated uh, with somebody else, with somebody's drug? Uh, magnesium would typically not be contraindicated okay. with any drug, yeah, no. Now, somebody with kidney failure, we would need to make sure and monitor their dosage of magnesium, but not really any mm. interaction with drugs. Maybe with some antibiotics, you would want to separate it a little bit. Okay. But other than that, no interactions typically. Now, speaking of kidney disease, now, uh, you've told me before that, uh, you know, when people have stones of any kind in the body, mm -hmm. that's typically calcium related, mm -hmm. and magnesium, to my understanding, it's the, it's the antidote to calcium? Well, magnesium pushes calcium into the bones, where 99% of the calcium in the body should be in the bones okay. and in the joints. And so magnesium helps to take the calcium and, and put it where it belongs. Um, high calcium levels in the blood can lead to arterial calcification, which is obviously a bad thing. It can lead to gallstones, it can lead to kidney stones. Mm. And magnesium, yes, is the antidote for, for those things, along with vitamin D and vitamin K in the right forms, but, but magnesium is the number one thing. Now, speaking of the right forms, we've talked about the five different forms that you have in your formulation, and mm -hmm. you, you're always adamant that, to say that these are this is elemental magnesium. Yes. Uh, what does that mean when people are reading the front of the bottle and they see how many, <laughs> however many milligrams? Right, so three capsules of, of my product contain 100 milligrams but it's elemental magnesium. So there's okay. a big confusion because of the quality of what we do and the um, organizations that we go through to verify everything we do. We put every ingredient in elemental amounts okay. versus total weight amount of a capsule. So when you see three capsules equals 100 milligrams of magnesium, it's true elemental magnesium. It's not fillers, it's not additives, it's not capsule weight. So 400 milligrams of magnesium in a typical capsule is what you would see on the store shelf. Well, how much magnesium is really there? Mm. Well, because there's no regulations, we don't know. Ah. So we're, we're giving the numbers the, on the label for the part that you really care about and that really matters to your body's ability to use it. Okay, now we're gonna talk more about that in the next segment, but first I wanna ask you how much do you take, or how much does a typical person, I mean, you probably take a little more than this because you, know, uh, you know what's yeah. good for you, but what do most people do? Most people with our product will take at least three at bedtime. Okay. Uh, three to six would be the most typical dose at bedtime. I do four. So okay, yeah. That's right, right in the okay. middle. Yeah. Um, and then we encourage people to take one or two in the morning and one or two at lunch. Okay. Um, because magnesium has so many benefits during the day, but at night it is so relaxing. We improve people's um, quality of sleep, their deep sleep mm. very quickly, um, typically the first night or two. Now, when people say, okay, well, you're telling me it relaxes me. Am I going to get, am I going to fall asleep at my desk if I take two during the no, day? Just the opposite. Really? That's the beauty of magnesium is it actually relaxes us to sleep, but it increases the energy at night while we sleep. Huh. so that the body can do all the cellular cleanup, like take out the trash at night, right? Okay. It's called autophagy, yeah. where the body is cleaning up bad cells and things that we put in that need to go. And so magnesium has an amazing ability to produce energy 
while it relaxes us. So during the day, no, it's going to make you more alert. Oh, great. Wow. Okay. So it doesn't mess up our circadian rhythm no. at all. Okay. No. Very interesting. All right. Well, we are talking with pharmacist Billy Weiss about magnesium. We'll be back with more from The Health Awakening. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. We're speaking with pharmacist Billy Weiss about magnesium. And uh, during the break, you just told me something interesting about uh, the drugs uh, that people take and the depletion that happens with that. Now, we touched on that earlier, but mm -hmm. you said there were some that really kind of are alert. Yeah, so like statin drugs, statin the most drugs. common okay. drugs today in America for cholesterol uh, reduction deplete magnesium. Hmm. And so that can lead to real problems, right? Because now you can't produce energy as efficiently as you should be able to in the heart. Okay. And that's very important, right? And yeah. so typically a statin would be given for heart protection, but then it's hurting the energy to the heart. So we need to at least replace the things that these drugs deplete. So, so statin drugs, diabetic drugs like hmm. metformin, um, blood pressure drugs, almost the entire line of blood pressure drugs, diuretics, certain antibiotics, and of course things like chemotherapy and those kind of drugs. That's crazy because we talked about blood pressure, where magnesium will lower the blood pressure, yet right. you're taking a drug yep. to lower blood pressure and then it steals magnesium. <laughs> it does, and, and, it's, and, and the sad part of that is, Scott, nobody is typically telling the patient Let's replace the magnesium. Let's replace the things that the drugs are depleting and let's see if we can get a better result. Wow. Again, because drugs, as we've talked about on other shows here, 398 side effects is the number for the average prescription drug and that's from the University of Stanford School of Medicine. So hmm. if we can minimize the use of prescription drugs by maximizing magnesium, vitamin D, you know, these other kind of things that have no side effects. I think that's always a, a win. Now, if someone is thinking this on their own, not, not that you've, you know, told people to do this, but even if their doctor is, you know, unwilling to listen, mm -hmm. if someone says, I wonder if I could try going off my, my blood pressure med and doing more magnesium, have you seen people do that? Oh, we've seen a lot of people that have come off all their prescription drugs, yes, going through my OptiU program, using the right supplements, you know, so yes. I mean, wow. but I tell everybody, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you to take or not right. take what the doctors told you to do, but if your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your whatever is normal without it, mm. um, probably makes sense that you would want to work with your doctor and try to get off, right? Right, exactly, and right. a good doctor will help you do that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, we talked about uh, diabetes, heart disease, all these type of things, but some folks, may not be thinking of other things uh, regarding you know, uh, magnesium de deficiency, and that is Alzheimer's, ALS, mm -hmm. uh, Parkinson's, you told me, is even yeah. related to this? Yeah, there's some research out of Japan and Australia that show pretty beneficial effects for all of the above. Mm. Um, for the memory issues, the dementias, the, uh, the Alzheimer's, and the Parkinson's. Wow. So yeah, magnesium deficiency is found in the spinal fluid in the brain of patients with, with these conditions. And we, they've seen improvement um, by replacing magnesium. Hmm. Now, another thing you told me is surprising during the break, uh, EMFs all around us, especially yeah. now with 5G towers and these yeah. ultra 5G towers, yeah. uh, a lot of EMF coming off those things, even off of a yeah. hairdryer, a, you know, your cell phone. Yeah. Uh, in your cars now. Your cars. I mean, it's everywhere oh, you Electric go. cars. Think right. of an, a Tesla or a, right. a Prius that I have. The, right. the EMFs, in fact, I've taken an EMF meter and put it in the back seat pinned it yeah so yeah. magnesium is related so that takes magnesium out of the body or how does that work? well magnesium is protective against some of the ill effects of emfs mm. so the emfs destroy the cellular lining the the outside of our cells and again there's hundreds of trillion cells in our average body human body so when those cells get the outer lining gets damaged Calcium will then leak out, and we've already talked about some of the issues with calcium leaking out, like heart blockage, you know, in arteries, stones, and those kind of things. Well, magnesium is protected because it's a, it's a natural calcium channel blocker. So we've talked about how it tries to push calcium back into the bones and the joints where it belongs. And so, yes, magnesium levels... Uh, can be very protective against EMF uh, damage to our bodies. Wow. Very interesting. All right, we're going to come back with more with pharmacist Billy Weiss talking all about magnesium. Hopefully some stuff you have never heard, some stuff I've never heard. So we'll be back with more on The Health Awakening. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Health Awakening. I hope you're learning a few things about magnesium as I am with pharmacist Billy Weiss. Billy, before we go, uh, we talked about all these different diseases, but they all start with inflammation. Yep. Does magnesium help with that? Yes, inflammation is, is a huge factor in almost every disease we see today. And magnesium certainly can help dampen the inflammatory processes in our body. So that, now beyond even what we've talked about, Alzheimer's, you know, high blood pressure, even heart disease, all these type of things. What else? Are we, are we talking things like cancer? Oh, absolutely. There, there's research that shows that it can help with cancer. And some of that help, some of that benefit is believed to be the anti-inflammatory benefits, mm. along with magnesium's ability to increase the, the delivery of oxygen through the microcirculation or the microcapillaries of our mm. body. So it can help push oxygen to places that are a little bit tougher to get the oxygen to than the, than the big vessels. And really that's where heart disease starts. Isn't that's it? correct. In the micro, we, talk, we think about the big arteries and getting a bypass, but that, that's really where it lies, right? That's correct. I mean, it, there are so many small arteries within our heart and right leading to our heart mm. that that can be a huge problem if we have calcification in wow. those arteries. Billy, we're going to have to talk more on the michaelrood.tv app. We're going to do a little bonus uh, on this, okay. but first of all, where can people get your magnesium? Because I love it. Where can other people get it? Yeah, so they can get it through our website, opti.urx.com. They can order from there. They okay. can always call Prescriptions Plus Pharmacy. Uh, 704-867-3518. All right. And you also have some webinars that you do every once in a while as well, right? Yes, And absolutely. those are listed on your website? I don't know if they're listed right now because I just did the weekend this past weekend, but okay. <laughs> they will be, yes. All right, well, there you go. You can find more about magnesium and Billy at OptiUrx.com. Go there. And until then, thank you for joining us on The Health Awakening. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today on The Health Awakening. You can catch the replay of this episode and see our complete show archive at healthawakening.tv. For more information about our guests today and all they have to offer, please visit their website on the bottom of your screen. And please remember, the information you saw today is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice, nor do the views expressed reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result.